is happening, family? I am Arrington Gavin, your host of the Arrington Gavin Show. Look, I'm so excited to join you here on this awesome day. Uh, it's time to hear your nightly dose with the pulse of the world uh, coming to you from all platforms, digital and streaming wise, as well as WDJY 99.1 FM straight talk out of Dallas, Georgia. So we thank you so much, as well as uh, WDJYFM.com. So multiple ways you can listen in. Look, we're going to have a great conversation. Like always here on this program, we delve deep into the currents of politics, unravel the thrills of sports, and dissect the latest in pop culture and beyond. And that is the Arrington Gavin Show. That's what we do here. That's what we do. We have great conversations. We, uh, uh, whether it's um, you know, we want to stay informed, we want to have fun, but we also can be very opinionated too because there's so much stories happening, man. I'm sorry, I gotta share, give you my unfiltered thoughts and opinions on this. Um, we're gonna discuss a lot today. Uh, journalist, award winning journalist Don Lemon, which we all know if you're familiar with his work, he was one of the top person, uh, top uh, journalists and anchors on CNN for I want to say 17 years. He was uh, uh, then fired and uh, he started his own platform his own media company start his own streaming show the don lemon show and he was initially supposed to be one of the programs on the upcoming uh new revamped x formerly known as twitter it was him sports journalist jim rome he also had uh, uh tulsi gabber former democratic congresswoman and a presidential candidate turned conservative commentator uh she also was supposed to be doing some work on there and and don lemon was one of the um, names that Elon Musk, who now owns the streaming platform, said, hey, look, we're going to have a great line of shows coming up. Don was one of them. Don was on there for not even a week and boom, he was gone. So now Don is suing Elon Musk for a breach of contract. We also got to talk about uh, black farmers receiving uh, two billion dollars from USDA. We'll talk a little more with that as well as Chipotle CEO says that. They will now start offering larger portions after countless complaints from consumers. Um, we also, I, I will, uh, we're going to have our fun fact of the day as well. But I'm going to bring up the question: Are you black enough? Or hashtag When I Turn Black? You're probably like Aaron. What are you talking about? Well, we will dive deep into that as well. Again, you're tuning into the Aaron to Gavin Show. Uh, here we discuss. Uh, trending news and thought-provoking topics from the fields of politics, sports, pop culture, and all the beyond. You're t- you can listen to us on all major digital uh, platforms, streaming platforms, all podcast platforms, as well as WDJY 99.1 FM Straight Talk weeknights at 11 p.m. Uh, out of Dallas, Georgia. So we truly appreciate that, as well as WDJYFM.com. Before I move on, I have to acknowledge our proud supporters of the Arrington Gavin Show. Without them, we cannot continue to keep the lights running. Uh, I want to shout out Bernardo's Menswear. Shout out to my good friend, Mr. Bernardo Johnson. He is uh, the founder and owner of Bernardo's Menswear. This uh, clothing brand keeps you looking swagged out from head to toe. Business casual, formal, you name it. Amazing line of shoes. Uh, if you happen to be in the Hampton Roads area, please go by and visit his location, uh, located a store location located at Magother Mall in the heart of Norfolk, Virginia, downtown Norfolk, 300 Monticello Avenue, store 167. But for those who are not uh, in the Hampton Roads area, Hampton Roads, Virginia area, no worries. You can shop online at www.bernardomenswear.com. Again, that website is www.bernardomenswear.com. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention, guys, follow us on Instagram uh, at the Arrington Gavin Show. I truly appreciate it. So for a lot of stuff that I can impact within this hour of the program, I shared on social media uh, on our Instagram page. I'll even do a live here and there. Uh, we'll have an interview on fate on IG live. Uh, and, um, and yeah, so please follow us, share our YouTube channel, R smooth club media. That's the letter R smooth club media, uh, on YouTube, as well as uh rumble at the Arrington Gavin show. So multiple ways you can follow, subscribe. I truly appreciate that. Please share, share it with a friend, 
um, we want to continue to get that movement of just great conversations, but also unbiased conversations too. Uh, yes, we're, we're opinionated. I should, I give you my honest opinion, but I don't expect you to just say, well, take my, take Aaron's word for it. No, you have your, your, you have your own opinion. You have to go with your personal gut and thoughts and feelings on certain issues. But look, you might like it. You might not like my, my, uh, uh responses on certain things, but that's okay. But you know what? I'm a big believer. We can always agree to disagree and I respect others' opinions. That's the whole point of having an opinion, right? So, and we're very unbiased, independent platform here. So, uh, I will, let's see, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll have our first story, uh, of the day. Don't go anywhere. My friends, you are now listening to the Arrington Gavin show. Order your beard care products with Rugged Evolution. We're your local beard care line that supports the maintenance of your full mature beard. Our line includes conditioning shampoos, moisturizers, balms, oils, shaving lotions, and exfoliating soaps. These products moisturize, hydrate, nourish, and have all the natural ingredients for a healthy beard. Log on to our website or download our app to place your orders. Become a man of distinction with Rugged Evolution Beard Care. And remember, Rugged is the new smooth. All righty, my friends, welcome back to the Arrington Gavin Show. I'm your host, Arrington Gavin. Look, we're going to start off first with our fun fact of the day. Uh, let's see here. Did you guys know identical twins don't have the same fingerprints? Interesting. I know, because the first thing that went in my mind was like, wait, so they're not identical twins? If they but you know what I mean? Like I thought identical twins have literally identical features, the exact same thing, right? They look the same, some same shape. Uh uh well sometimes I I've seen identical twins and they you know one's heavier than the other, or one's mus more muscular than the, like I've seen different shaped ones, but they're identical twins, so they should have really all very of the same features, right? So check this out. It says here you can't blame your crimes on your twin after all. This is because environmental factors during development in the womb, uh, umbilical cord length, position in the womb, and the rate of a finger growth impact your fingerprint. See, you learn something every day. You learn something every day, only here on the Aaron T. Gavin Show. So that was our fun fact today. I hope you enjoyed. Now, look, starting with our first story uh, we would like to share is I've mentioned earlier in the beginning, Don Lemon, Don Lemon, award-winning journalist and a former anchor of CNN, uh, now turned independent uh, media journalist. He has his own uh, platform, uh, uh, platform I believe it's called like Lemon Media or something like that. He ha he also has his own uh, digital and streaming show called The Don Lemon Show. It's it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's unfiltered. He has uh, interviews with a little bit of everybody. Um, and he's he's growing that platform as we speak, because when CNN fired him, that was a breach of their contract. And they gave him like a huge uh, payout or initially they weren't trying to give him that payout. So it had to go to court. He ended up winning. I think he received like twenty seven million dollars and some change. Uh, a good hefty amount of money, by the way. Like you can any, you know, at, at, at his age, I believe he's in his 50s. So that's good money to have. Right. Uh, and in addition to, you know, money he's receiving from his uh, media company and things in that nature is, you know, some good stuff happening. Uh, but recently it's coming out that Don is suing Elon Musk. Why, you ask? So when Don was first let go of CNN, he was like, I think it was possibly it, it had, a year had went by and uh, you did not 
hear a word from Don uh, on social media. You might have seen him, you know, post pictures of him partying, you know, uh, uh, going to, you know, New York Fashion Week. And he was still in the public eye. He wasn't trying to really hide away from the public, but just didn't really have a lot to say. Right. He wasn't doing a lot of journalistic work. He was living his best life. He even got you know married to his longtime uh, 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 fiance uh, uh, or excuse me, longtime partner. And so, he, you know, he's living his best life. But he had then posted on his social media that he's excited to announce the next chapter of his life. And Elon Musk, let's kind of backtrack it a little bit. Billionaire Elon Musk took controls of Twitter at the time because, see, Twitter was one of those, was getting a bad rep under the uh, Trump administration. Uh, why? Because social media is supposed to be a platform for freedom of speech. Regardless of your views and opinions, it should be a hub for people to share their thoughts and opinions on anything. Now, now, that uh, that doesn't go for hate speech. If you're promoting hate speech on your social media, you should be banned. You should be let. It shouldn't be allowed at all, right? Hate speech towards an individual or a specific group and community that should not be allowed whatsoever. But there should be platforms for you to have your freedom to share your opinion. Like hell, you know, for me on uh, on my social media platforms, I'll share my opinions, but I share my opinions when it's needed, right? Hey, would you? What's your thoughts on? the these prices being raised what's your thoughts on uh chipotle doing this what's your thoughts on x y and z doing that share your opinions but again be be respectfully be respectful and then also mindful the fact that you are on social media platform and certain words words hurt and also words can uh, uh provoke somebody into doing something we I, i've always said former president donald trump had a huge part in that january 6th Agree, agree with me or disagree with me, I could care less. But look, he knew his audience. He knew what whatever he says they'll do. And guess what? They did. And some of them did even worse. So I, that's a whole nother story. Not going to go on from there. But Don had announced that he was starting his own media company. But in the, in the first project of that media company was the Don Lemon Show. Because Don was always very opinionated on uh, CNN. Even though he was an anchor, he was, he's a true journalist. He was always very... Uh, um, still had his, you know, his opinion and always kind of, he he had that talk show host, right? He always wanted to be unfiltered. He always wanted to be like, hey, look, I'm prime time, Don Lemon. I say what I want here. I, no, I'm going to say this. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. That's how he was. So eventually it didn't work in his benefit because CNN has been struggling ratings wise and they're doing this whole revamp. They went through, I believe, like two or three uh, presence of the networks now and don had transitioned from prime time to a morning show morning show that he hosted uh with uh two i believe poppy harlow and kate oh lord um i'm forgetting her. katie katie hunt katie somebody and uh they it just it, it didn't work out it didn't work out the ratings it didn't improve at all and um and they end up canceling that show and doing something totally different so don was in up let let go and which it was a failure on cnn because you let go at the time you let go of chris cuomo and then now don you're letting key names from your network uh go and you're trying to build up a network with People that still doesn't have a huge like you still got Anderson, you got Wolf Blitzer, you got uh uh um I'm I'm loving the primetime lineup by the way Abby Phillips, Laura Coates I like I'm I'm fa I'm fans of them but there are some shows that's like uh eh, but they're really trying to revamp more centrist and not more left uh, leaning uh platform as I as I'm I'm running off right now but Don it was announced that Don's new independent show which you could say it was like you know like a, a video podcast was gonna be uh exclusively um they were, they had a sign exclusive deal with x exclusive meaning they were gonna in that contract i think they were gonna show like um a certain amount of programming shows things in that nature he still would have like his youtube he still would have the rights to his podcast uh, you know, formats right on streaming platforms, things of that nature. But this was like an exclusive deal he did sign with X, uh, which was pretty, pretty uh, uh, big news in my opinion. I thought it was a move in the right direction because Don Lemon, even though he worked for a left leaning 
uh, network for 17 years. Don Lemon is a registered independent. So he's he he's his viewpoints are very independent and he's had, you know, uh, blowout arguments on TV with left leaning advocates, right leaning advocates. And I mean, that's how that's how it's supposed to be. Right. As an independent, you got to be unbiased. Uh, Rome had also uh, the first person uh, that um, Elon Musk had worked a deal with and signed on was Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson was fired from Fox News. Now, Fox News, Tucker Carlson made them a crap ton of money. Let's let's just be real. Tucker Carlson, I, I believe he was in the 8 p.m. time slot, prime time again. Um, but it was one of the, its highest rated programs, only a very opinionated uh, show. And Carlson, who is, I would consider him a conspiracy theorist. I would consider him uh, a guy that's extremely conservative. I would consider him a guy that is, uh, you know, smart journalist. But I just, I don't like the way he does things. I don't agree with probably 80% of the stuff he says, 80 to 85% of the stuff he says. But, hey, he's worked his way up the ladder at, in journalism. You got to give him his props because he's successful for, for, for a reason, right? Now, now it's been spewing more weird things but he has his own platform he's he's rich he's he's doing doing a lot of big stuff right he was one of the first people to start a show on x and it it's been killing it ever since now the 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 conversation that comes up for elon when elon first became the owner of twitter now called x was because elon was not for censorship he was he was anti censorship. So regardless of political opinions, he was like, "No, I'm not for it. There should be a platform that allowing people to share their opinions." That's what he said. So that's one of the big reasons why he why he bought Twitter. Which Twitter, their numbers are still back and forth. Now, me personally, you have Twitter is starting to be used as a uh, avenue for a lot of conspiracy theorists and right wingers, in my opinion. In my opinion, uh, Elon Musk, as even though he's trying to be as an uh, an unbiased person, he still plays sides because recently uh, Elon Musk suspended uh, uh, an account called White Dudes for Harris, which is it says it right there in the title. It's it's uh, white men who are Harris supporters, and he suspended their account. Hmm. Now, Elon, you just said. You want you, you you there's your anti censorship, uh, regardless of your opinions. No, it doesn't work like that. Now, guess who has his account back? Former President Donald Trump. <laughs> okay, guys like Don Bongino, guys like uh, uh, Tucker Carlson has an account. I'm just saying you have so many individuals with their uh, uh, with their uh, platform that is very controversial, right? But they have a platform on on X. So hey, why can't anybody have a platform? I'm on I'm on X. Okay. What's what's the deal? So again, fast forward, Elon Musk had worked to deal with Don and even like a lot of uh uh Don's uh uh Democratic friends, which I've heard him speak on the show, they're like, What are you doing? And Don's like, Hey, this is a good opportunity to, you know, hey, I want to bring on people that I don't agree with the conversation is everything. I'm anti-censorship as well. I'm freedom of speech. Um, it's like, like myself, I totally agree. So I want to read you this article, guys. Um, this was reported by NBC News. Uh, to some people on the on the right, they might say, oh, left-leaning fake news. But, hey, reliable news sources. I, I, I read them all. So it says here, Don Lemon sues Elon Musk and X alleging fraud and breach of contract over X show. Now, the day after his his Don had did one show, one show on um X, which you can actually still tune in. I believe you can tune into his show on under his X account. Uh, uh, you know, Don episodes, all that good stuff. But his first episode was an interview with elon musk <clears throat> and don had put on social media he's like hey elon is mad at me and he did not like the way that's this yada 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 then it shows that the deal is off he asked him like after that first interview i'm like damn what happened so as i continue it says musk and x in induced lemon to agree 
to a deal to profit off his name and rehabilitate the uh bullet excuse me uh platform rep platform's reputation the complaint says it says here um he's accusing don is accusing of failure of make payment wait he's accusing them of failure of make payment after the deal fell apart on the heels of their continuous interview this past year the lawsuit files uh claims that musk and x lured lemon the former cnn anchor into an exclusive show deal promising uh, a million and a half annually full authority over his comment and financial incentives incentives um incentive incentives incentive wow i cannot say that word incentives <laughs> in a bid to profit off his reputation and attract advertisers only to pull out with it with only to pull out without payment musk and x did not immediately respond to requests for comment on the lawsuit, but the complaint filed in San Francisco County Superior Court alleges fraud, breach of contract, and misappropriation of Don, Don Lemon's name and likeness. Lemon is a prominent figure on the journalism landscape. I've mentioned before, you know, his career. Uh, says here, Musk had fully taken over X, formerly known as Twitter, in October of 2022 in a uh, tumultuous shakeup in which he fired top executives, um, initiated a mass layoff, and controversially reinstated banned accounts. I mentioned before, he brought in a lot of people that was banned because some of their words at the time were used as, and not even say at the time, but under previous ownership, they were like, wait, no, that's that's hate speech. We're not promoting that ban. Perfect example. Um. I mean, come on. <clears throat> the whole reason why Donald Trump created Truth Social was because a lot of social media platforms were banning him. So he's like, I'll just start my own. So the complaint alleged that in a scramble to retain and secure advertising, X and Musk sought to sought to partner with established public figures to uh, re rehabilitate their own reputation. Now, Musk and X entice Lemon with false promises and representation the complaint alleges now in may of 2023 shortly after cnn's don lemon must post it on x have you considered doing your own show on this platform maybe worth a try audience is much bigger it's very true there's a huge huge audience on x as i mentioned cnn is struggling with viewership numbers the top the very top rated um news platform right now is fox news that is the they always uh destroy msnbc cnn in the ratings there's there's fox news at the top with millions and millions of followers that uh that uh, so, uh watch their television platforms i got stuff to say about that but you know another another day another show and um second to them i believe is like MSNBC, then CNN's at the bottom. Then you got News Nation, um, Newsmax. You got so many other platforms from there. So he's right. The audience is much larger, which is like, okay, Don, you you know, you get you you know you get kicked out of this one, but guess what? Another opportunity, another door opens for you, and to still be you, right? Be authentic, be independent. Um. Says here must ask Lemon to enter into an exclusive partnership deal with X in phone in a phone conversation in June of 2023, but Lemon had uh, reservations because of the ongoing controversy surrounding the X platform. Must insisted that Lemon could have a full authority and could have full authority and control over the work he produced, even if Must didn't like it. The complaint says, stick stick hold of that now. It says that Must induced Lemon into excuse me, in, uh, induced Lemon to enter into an exclusive partnership deal that there would be no need for a formal written agreement or to fill out paperwork. Now, that right there might hurt Don. Now, Don got, Don got, uh, he, he won a big case uh, involving CNN, like I've mentioned before, received 27 million or maybe 25 million, something like that, uh, from that case. But every agreement should have written documentation, a full on contract. But, you know, with the work of technology, you can you can backtrack a phone conversation with somebody. But I still like, no, 
ink ink is more permanent okay ink is a lot more permanent lemon and ha- lemon had another meeting in december with uh linda y- uh, yarsarino exo ceo and brett weiss its head of content talent and brand sales in new york city where they s- were similarity assured him he'd have full control over his work he alleges now in january X and Musk proposed a one-year deal for $1.5 million that would give X exclusive rights to specific video content for 24 hours before it was dispersed to other platforms. Um, according to so so X was almost like the first main hub, and then reruns and all that stuff was produced out in all different ways, similar to like my program, right? So furthermore, the deal promised Don Lemon. 60% of growth, gross advertising revenue generated from his content and performance uh, threshold payments based on follower counts. The show was supposed to be a 30 minute, 30 minute episodes shared three times a week, covering politics, culture, sports, and entertainment to run exclusively on the platform. The complaint says, uh, however, the complaint says, and this is after Don Lemon agreed. It says here, however, the complaint says Musk and X never intended to fulfill their representation and promises to Lemon and instead only intend to publicize a partnership between X and Lemon to promote the company, improve their reputation and profit off Lemon's name. Then came the long article, not trying to read the whole thing, but just trying to give you the meat and potatoes. Then came the continuous, the uh, uh, conscious interview on March 8th. When Lemon interviewed Musk for the first episode. Now, I, I'm not going to read more, but I'll give you the logistics and all the information about this interview. I spoke about it before here on the show a while back. Don pressed Elon on loads of questions. Who who are you backing up uh, in the next upcoming election? What's your thoughts on uh, censoring and freedom of speech? What's your thoughts on this? What's your thoughts on that? And it was a lot of back and forth and you can tell it was elon musk was pissed he was not happy with the hardcore questioning the pressing all that good stuff he's like don i'm doing you a favor here okay the only reason i agree to this interview is because we should be having our platform like if 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 it was another case it wouldn't happen like i mean elon was you know attacking don to his face as well as uh uh don was doing the exact same thing now i've mentioned before in this program it was very risky for Don Lemon to ask those kind of questions, especially to someone you know your boss. You can't you can't expe- uh, 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 you can't expect to have that much freedom on your first day on the job and say, "Look, I got this, I got this, I want to press you on this." No, sometimes you you got you got to make your boss happy, right? Now, I under I get especially business wise, I get the interview because hello, how many interviews or how many uh networks usually can get an interview out of the richest man in the world seriously i think it was it was it was golden so far it's been the highest rated episode for don lemon's show uh since starting and that was the very first one he's done countless more now i you know hey shout out to uh don lemon please you know subscribe to him on all his platforms and check out his show it's it's it's, it's interesting it's really good um and again, I I don't agree with uh, Don Don uh, uh, a good portion of the time either. But I'm a fan of his work. I'm a fan of his you know his style. He's true to his style. Uh, Elon, what he got out of it too was like, look, we I want you to be, uh, you know, your independent. I thought you might have changed to especially since being let go of CNN. But he's like, I feel like I just brought in CNN to X, and I didn't want that because he, he you know Elon doesn't doesn't like CNN. He clear as day he doesn't you know he's not a fan of the 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 views he's not a fan of the platform and he didn't want that don lemon now that to me that just showed that's don lemon style that's how he's always been he's being his authentic self that's how his journalistic abilities are um but after he after that interview that that widely recognized widely known and viral uh interview he was it, it was let go it was let go just like that now honestly 
that did not hurt Dom's feelings at all. He was cheesing. He was like, oh, he did not like me. Doesn't like it seemed like it was just a pointless, like, oh, that that didn't work out. But you can still find me on X, just not now. I'm not exclusively with those other incentives. And so I mean, like, hey, it, it, it is what it is. He was fine. Like I said, he's still enjoying that 27 million recently. I don't, and he's not like he didn't have money before. So I just thought that was just a brush under the bridge. Not gonna hear anything more about it. But obviously. Boy, was I wrong because now he's suing them. Will he receive um, – um, would he win this case? Could he possibly win more uh, than what he was initially offered the annually? I mean, you never know. Right now he's one for one for oh in the, in court cases, right, especially when it comes to breach of contracts. Uh, but I'll, I'll look more into this because if there was no specific, specifically um, detailed stuff or written agreement, which I mean, I beg to differ. I'm pretty sure there's a written agreement there when you involve uh, the two parties and and the, the the status of these individuals. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure there was a signed agreement uh, within this. But um, it says here, uh, within a day of the interview, must sent Lemon's agent a text messaging saying that the partnership and contract was canceled around that time. Weiss also spoke with Lemon by phone and said that uh, defendants weren't going to pay him or follow through their promises to him because there was no signed agreement. We are still going back to what the richest man in the freaking world and Don Lemon. You telling me there was no written agreement. Is this how the big is this how big time starts? Y'all? Is this how Hollywood is? Is this is this how, you know, the stars work? They don't do signed agreements. They just a shake hand or a phone call or a text. Like, come on. How careless can you be? How careless can you be? So if that's the case, I don't think Don is going to come out of this as the as the winner. But, again, like I mentioned before, Don's one for O. He's one for O. So we will see more, guys. We will uh, continue to follow up more on this story. As I digress from this, uh, I also want to... Again, shout out to another proud sponsor of the Andrew Gavin Show, Rugged Evolution Beard Care. Rugged is the new smooth is their slogan, uh, an all-natural men's grooming line with 17 scented beard balms, beard oils, conditioning shampoos, you name it. They have it there. Keeps your facial hair care looking well-maintained, groomed, uh, got, got, got a nice little shine, soft skin underneath the hair taken care of as well. Um, please check them out. Their website is Rugged evo.com www.ruggedevo.com we want to thank them for being a proud supporter of the Arrington Gavin show so when we come back guys we'll have some more stories more interesting conversations here on your favorite show the Arrington Gavin show don't go anywhere my friends we will be back Become a man of distinction with Rugged Evolution Beard Care. Order our scented beard oils and beard balms to help you maintain and grow the perfect beard. Order today. Try our men's care products like the Full Body Exfoliating Cleansing Bars, Body Wash, Smooth Stash, and more. Log on to our website or download our app to place your orders. Rugged Evolution Beard Care. We're your luxury but affordable men's care line. And remember, Rugged is the new smooth. Welcome back, my friends, to the Aaron Gavin Show. All right, next up here on the program, I um, thought this was a great story to share with you all. Uh, black farmers, black farmers received $2 billion from USDA. Let me pull up this article for you. Um, now, this is reported from The Root. 
a minority, a black owned news publication. I highly recommend to check them out. Uh, it says here, black and minority farmers are getting $2 billion payments, a $2 billion payment after years of discrimination from USDA. But is it enough is what they, uh, title, how they titled it. Uh, I've been on and off seeing this on, um, on news platforms and really not, not a lot of, uh, big corporate owned news platforms, right? I've, I've seen it. Uh, I've heard of the story mainly on the Grio, uh, the black star network and, and on Roller Martin unfiltered. Also, I, I remember seeing this back on the, uh, back when they had the black news channel. I did see that one. Uh, I heard about it from there. So, since there are more than $2 billion of direct to indirect payments has been paid to black and minority farmers by the Biden administration. Um, says here, it's a good day for thousands of black farmers across the country because more than $2 billion in direct payments were paid to more than 23,000 farmers by the Biden-Harris administration. Uh why exactly it says here after decades of discrimination against black farmers by the United States Department of Agriculture, the Biden Harris administration attempting to right those wrongs through the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, discrimination, inflation, inflation Reduction Act, discrimination financial assistance program, DFAP for short. This act is meant to provide financial assistance to those minority farms who were denied access to SDA lending and safety net programs. Now, this case has been going on for a long time, very long time. So it didn't, it, nothing happened during the Trump administration. So again, just to FYI, when you hear I've made I've, 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 the black, I've made the black people happy. Um, um, uh, black jobs were great. They love me. Da, da, da. Okay. So let's see how the black farmers say about that, Mr. Trump. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I think this is dope. I think this is dope for one. It's a, it, it it's a great eye opener for those who were unfamiliar with black farmers or even thought that black farmers didn't exist. Cause guess what they do? There's tons of black farmers in our, in our country. Um, I remember seeing, okay. So the national black farmers association founder and president John Boyd jr. Told the associate press, um, it's like putting a bandage on somebody that needs open heart surgery. We want, um, okay, before I continue this, uh, while this is a good step forward for many American, uh, many black farmers, they are also, they also understand that this will not totally solve some of the, hold up, just lost my place. says here uh is it won't totally solve uh solve the problems that they still deal with to to this day um as i mentioned before the national black farm association founder and president john Boyne jr told the associate press it's like putting a bandage on somebody that needs open heart surgery we want our land and i want to be i want to be very very clear about that um boyd is still fighting says here uh, a federal lawsuit for 120 percent debt relief for black farmers that was approved by Congress in 2021. Five billion dollars for the program was included in the one point nine trillion dollar covid-19 stimulus package. But the money never came. White farmers in several states filed lawsuits arguing their exclusive exclusion was a violation of the constitutional right, which prompt judges to halt the program shortly after its pat after its passage. Faced with the likelihood of a lengthy court battle, which I mentioned, I've heard the story going on for quite some time. That would uh, delay payments to farmers. Congress amended the law and offered financial help to a broader group of farmers. A new law uh, allocated three point one billion dollars to help. Uh, farmers struggling with USDA backed loans and 2.2 billion to pay farmers who the agency discriminated against. Um, this is interesting, guys. This is an interesting story. I highly recommend to continue to read more and follow up more with this. I'm gonna talk about it a little more on my social media, but I think it's you know it's it's a step 
in the right direction, but like the uh, uh like Mr. John Boy Jr. said, it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. And we have to keep adding more fuel to the fire and putting people accountable of you know promises that were never met for them. So again, black farmers has received uh, have received two billion dollars from USDA, but more is definitely uh, uh, needed for them, and um, and there should be, there should be, they deserve it. Uh, I'm not an outdoors guy at, at all, but I do believe that, um, uh, uh, you know, I know the kind of work that they put in. I know the kind of work they put in. I know it's not easy being a farmer in general. Um, but once again, and it's sad, but in our society, certain cultures and groups are not looked upon equally. Right. They're they're just they're just not they're They're not looked upon equally. So um, I do hope that good things will happen to them uh, soon. Um, but as I digress to our next uh, next story, I don't know if y'all have been, you know, paying attention at the election like myself. <laughs> but seriously, uh, this election is continuing to get more and more uh, uh, intense. Um, again, just what the with the personal attacks and and now with the the uh uh the question is uh is she is she even black is she black enough when was when did she become black so let me play just one of these this is just a this is a one of the continuous just dumb dumb things coming from uh the right as far as uh as far as this election is concerned um, one of uh, Fox News, very popular and known voices, opinionated voices, Jesse Waters, uh, who is a uh, host of Jesse Waters Primetime. He's also one of the co-hosts of the highest rated show on Fox News, The Five. Um, I tune into The Five. I, the my my biggest pet peeve with The Five is that you have five individuals, and you're you're like, okay, how does this gonna go? Four of them attacks one person <laughs> because those four are very conservative now Greg gunfield libertarian but he leans more way more uh right than a, than a typical libertarian you got uh judge Janine Shapiro you got Dana Perino I believe and then Jesse waters and then there's another girl uh Jessica I'm struggling to say to pronounce her name but she's uh uh, uh the only uh Democrat on that show, let she has the she sits in the more liberal chair. You have another gentleman, um, uh, I think former congressman, last name Ford, I believe, uh, out of uh, Michigan. I think his name is Harrison, something not Harrison Ford. Um, oh, uh, well, Gerald, no, what is his name? Now it's gonna kill me to save my life. Uh, anyway, he is, uh, there's two people that's that swap within the liberal liberal seat but just 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 listen to this what um what jesse waters uh had to say um had to say about uh this this election you know he put it gave his two cents now i don't see why any man would vote Democrat. It's not the party of virtue, security. It's not the party of strength. It's definitely not the party of family. And what? to be a, a man and then vote for a woman just because she's a woman is either childish, that person has mommy issues, or they're just trying to be accepted by other women. And I heard the scientists say the other day that when a man votes for a woman, he actually transitions into a woman. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's what the science yeah, says. That's yes, science that's that's now, I don't see why any man. So that's what the science says. What scientist is as how Jessica should have definitely responded? Like, do you have the name of that scientist? And so we can interview him or her. Like, what are you like? Come on now. Where this is. And this is this is on the highest, most watched news network right now like millions and millions of people tune into this and this is the trash that i'm talking about y'all it's very important that you do your own research please have you know don't just rely on one source have multiple sources look i am not a democrat i'm not a republican i ride in the middle 
Um, that's always been my viewpoint. I people over politics, people over parties, and um, big person character. This right here is just garbage, just garbage. Yet this man's making millions of dollars. He has a huge platform saying this crap. I mean, give me a break, dude. Give me a break. Um, recently, to follow you up with more on this, uh, uh, Donald Trump was in. He had a rally over in uh, uh, Atlanta. So after, after the uh most talked about uh invitation he received at the nabj which was in chicago which has not helped donald trump's campaign whatsoever um he had a rally in atlanta trying to gather up all the you know the georgia votes which i would say georgia is probably gonna vote more on um on donald trump's side because georgia is a very red state now there have been uh uh leadership in georgia that's actually leaning towards harris like a uh, former lieutenant, a uh, lieutenant governor uh, out of Georgia. He is. He came out publicly endorsing. Uh, uh, he's going to be endorsing uh, Kamala Harris. And um, now uh, Governor Kemp has not come out endorsing uh, uh, Harris uh, by any means. But he's not uh, in publicly endorsed or said anything about supporting Donald Trump either. So, and Donald Trump has some words to say about. Uh, the the governor there, but I brought this up. I brought this up because Donald Trump at the NABJ has said, "I didn't even know when was she 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 black. When is she all of a sudden now she's black? I thought she was an Indian. I thought she was. She was always saying she was Indian. She was black, Indian one day. Now she's black when she did." And I get so sick and tired of when I hear individuals. And look, I've heard from people in the black community as well. She's black when she want to be black. Oh, she's this when she want to be this. Here's the thing. She's biracial. Her father's Jamaican. Her mom is Indian descent. There's You can go right now and see her with her family from both sides within their heritage. She is black. She is Indian. Yes, there is no she's black when she used to be. No, she's Kamala Harris, vice president, when she's uh, when she needs to be that she's that 24 7 she's uh the she's indian and she's black there is no okay i'm gonna turn this on no there's no such thing as that she's a graduate of Howard university she's a member of uh, alpha kappa alpha okay she's an aka she is from oakland <laughs> okay she is as black as can be, and she's as any as can be. That's her heritage. That's her upbringing. That's who she is. So this whole notion that, oh, I didn't know she was this. Would, to me, it's hogwash. And look, there's a uh, person who actually kind of stole the show recently at his uh, uh, his uh, um, Atlanta uh, rally recently. I'm going to play that clip for you. And then I'm also going to share my thoughts on uh, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris's uh, Atlanta rally because I know there was some controversy uh, over that who who was there Meg Thee was performing this and any other so I'll share that first I mean I'll share that after uh, I play this clip this soundbite from um, highlights from Donald Trump's uh, 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 rally over in Atlanta your feelings about things that have been said but i want you guys to pay attention to what has been done they don't want to talk policy they just want to use propaganda to steal your vote the left is trying to tout this woman as a savior for the black community but all she's done is hurt the black community since she came into the game See, the first step in destroying the black community is to dismantle the black family so aside from her record as a prosecutor why don't we ask Mrs. Willie Brown if Kamala Harris cares about black families? I wonder if Mrs. Willie Brown, a black woman, is also with her. A few days ago, President Trump said he didn't know Vice President Harris was a black woman. I'm trying to figure out what all the outrage is about because she's only black when it's time to get elected. Did I lie? The same black people who are mad at Trump for being confused about her race, ethnicity, nationality, whatever, are seemingly forgetting that while you're touting her as a savior for black people, she identifies as an Asian woman. She chose her side and it wasn't ours. 
When asked if she would ever do anything specifically for black people, she said no. Whereas Trump gave us the platinum plan, which specifically uplifted the black community by increasing capital by almost $500 billion, creating 500,000 new black businesses, and would give black churches the ability to fight for federal resources for their communities. All right, I'm not going to continue to 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 play that hogwash because it's a lie. It's it's not true whatsoever, and this is not a left lane talking point that I'm bringing up. She what she is saying is ex- extremely false. So if you're wondering who who was this lady, uh, she, uh, uh, uh supposedly a Georgia GOP Georgia activist. Um, now this is an article I'm reading um off of Fox News. Activist steals steals the show after being introduced to the Trump rally. Um, at, uh, as incredible. Michaela Montgomery called Trump Big T at the campaign rally. Now, honestly, y'all, this is now the the replacement of Diamond and Silk. If y'all are not familiar who Diamond and Silk was, I'm 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 uh trying to see it. One of them from the is, there was a duo, it was two sisters, uh, black conservatives, very strong, uh, right leaning, uh, black conservatives who were very ratchet, <laughs> but they were huge supporters of Donald Trump. They were always the biggest. Uh, advocates for Trump, especially when it was blacks for Trump, and they were always front and center. They, because of their controversy, because of their huge support, they went viral. They gained uh, uh, speaking engagements, TV shows, and talk shows, all that good stuff, right? I see not good stuff, but all that, all that stuff. Um, but they were always promoting lies and hate. All right, they were making a fool. They were making a fool of themselves, just like this lady right here, because once again, what was all the hoopla about? When she's black, what she wants to be. She she addresses as Indian. Have she told you that? Have you met her? Do you know her personally? Do you know her life? Like, what? 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 There's always somebody on the payroll, y'all. There's always somebody on the payroll that is will say anything for the almighty dollar. All right? Say anything for the almighty dollar. Uh, She was actually the... If, if there was a, a video of Trump arriving at a Chick-fil-A over in the Atlanta area, and there was a lady that's embraced her with a huge hug. Oh, 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 embraced him with a huge hug. That was her. That was her. Um, it says here, uh, uh, Trump invited her up on stage towards the end of his speech at the Georgia State University uh, Convocation Center. He introduced Montgomery by explaining he met her at a restaurant this year. Trump said Montgomery, who attended Clark University, HBCU, uh, has recognized him in public and commended him for funding historical black colleges and university. Another issue that's, I mean, another um, uh, fact check that's not true. He's saying he's given more to HBCUs. That's actually not true. And and don't take don't take my word for it. Do your own research. With both, that is not true at all. Um, also, he says here, she looks at me. It's uh, uh she looks at me says it's president trump you saved my college and i said how the hell do you know that this one is so smart so sharp this one is so smart (laughs) this one is so smart okay (laughs) this one is so i mean y'all gotta really think of this this wording y'all think of this wordage um uh she grabbed me gave me a kiss and added i said i think i'm never going back home to the first lady ha 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 Mr. Funny Man, Mr. Funny Man. So it says here the former president commended Montgomery, describing her as an incredible, as incredible with a tremendous future, and told her he would do whatever I can to help you before giving her the podium. I mean, that is that is her, you know, that's her moment, right? She, hey, her views are conservative. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, don't just bring up and be like, oh, I'm I'm a black pro- I'm I'm speaking for all black people. She never done anything for us. She never done anything for us. As you see the 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 few people behind, because they always they've always had certain amount of black people that's always up close and center in the camera angles when Trump is talking. Have you ever caught that? Any one of his rallies, there's either that same black man with like a slick perm ponytail. Oh, okay. He's he's viral. I don't know his name. I don't care either. But I'm just saying, you see the exact same. We're probably gonna see them again in all the other states. <laughs> oh, okay. That 
Now, there are some black Trump supporters. I'm not saying that that is, you know, that's not true. There's plenty of them out there. But this is just it's interesting, extremely interesting. Um, So, yes, he's had his rally in Atlanta right after uh, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris has uh, had hers, which was a star studded event, jam packed, almost had to get closed down because I think capacity was so, uh, so large. But the reason why I wanted to, and I'm running a little short on time, but I wanted to share my thoughts on hers, on her campaign, because um, it was kind of, it, it, it made some, uh, uh, some noise as far as once again, who was in attendance, uh, Quavo of the group Migos introduced her uh, to the stage. Meg the Stallion performed two songs on there. Now she was wearing a, you know, an appropriate attire, right? But she got up, she was twerking. She was doing Meg the Stallion things, right? You pay for a performer who is known for doing that. She's going to give you the performance that she is going to give you. She's not going to sugarcoat anything. She's not going to come up there singing acapella. No, she's going to go up there, do what she do. Now, a lot of people were saying, I think it was, it was perfectly fine what she did. A lot of people are not happy, especially in the black community, that you have a girl up there twerking and, and shaking a booty on stage, right? Boom, bam, bam. It, you know, a lot of people wasn't happy about that. Now, I want to give you my two cents um, about my thoughts on this. Now, is it a time and a place to do that? Absolutely. Was it that time? In my opinion, no. I don't, I don't think that that helps the black community when you bring up somebody twerking and you're speaking on like, like literally world views. You're speaking on key issues happening and you have a girl twerking up there. I don't see how that matches up. Um, I'm all for, hey, you having a party, everybody's having a good time. It's Atlanta, you know, the home of hip hop. Uh one well, one of the one of the homes of hip hop. And um, and I just I didn't I don't I don't like that. Um also I've heard a uh, older uh lady, uh, I was listening to a program and she was actually saying, you know, I wasn't offended by it. Um there's a way there's ways that you're trying to attract young people to to vote and get them more involved and grab their attention to me i'm like i i hear you man but it's like it sucks that that has to be the attention grabber you have a person up there twerk you have or even having a rapper in general to be the voice of the young people like not all young people are are give us you know you you bring up a a rapper oh you got our vote because that to me that dumbs us down right no we want to hear about these views we want to hear about your views and thoughts and the whole nine yards, uh, rather than just saying we are, uh, um, it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of us to, to receive, you know, to, to receive your endorsement. Like, oh, just, just bring up Megs, have her twerk a few times and, oh, you got our vote. You got our vote. So in that case, I just wish that it's more things that can really attract young people and I don't and well not could but I know for sure there's more things that can attract young people into voting for uh Kamala Harris rather than just saying okay look we're gonna bring you know maybe style and nothing against maybe Stein. she's a, an amazing performer uh talented artist and like I said dressed age appropriate I just wish she you know the twerking is just ah I just I don't I wouldn't know but anyway guys I'm coming up on uh uh my final uh my final time but don't no need to you know don't worry I'll be back uh, next for the Arrington Gavin show. So again, thank you so much for tuning in today's episode of the Arrington Gavin show. Look, we've explored the depths of current events, dissected the headlines, as well as shared moments of insight and inspiration. As we wrap up, please, please, please subscribe to us on YouTube, our smooth club media, as well as subscribe to my uh, channel on rumble at the Arrington Gavin show and follow us on Instagram at the Arrington Gavin show. I truly appreciate my friends. Be sure to tune in uh, weeknights, 11 PM, to the Aaron T. Gavin show on WDJY 99.1 FM straight talk out of Dallas, Georgia. Thank you so much. Y'all take care. God bless. Stay safe. And again, be sure, look, do your own research, man. Don't take my word for it, but do your own research and respect, respect others' opinions, man. Respect others' opinions. Until next time, my friends, y'all take care. I'm out.